Today I have a microwave oven. It's a Panasonic Madam Grill, and it does basically that as soon as you plug it in. It's got a short. Well, it doesn't do that. It just trips the breaker as soon as you plug it in. So we got a dead short on this one. Uh, it's going to be switches. Guaranteed it's going to be switches. We're going to pull this one apart, and we're going to get to the bottom of it and get this 33-year-old microwave operational again. Today I have a microwave. This one is a Panasonic. This is a Madam Grill. So this one actually use radiant heat to bake and cook food as opposed to convection so there's no fan on this one it actually uses the heating element on top a ceramic element on top and another one below to heat the oven up like a conventional oven now from what I understand on this one it's had very very little use as a microwave in fact the microwaves the owner says they never use the microwave because they have a second oven that they use as a microwave. This one is just used for baking, roasting, making casseroles, all that stuff. So all the only features they really even care about, they said don't even care if the microwave works, all they want is it to, to bake and broil. This one's tripping the breaker. We have a dead short. So more than likely, it's one of the switches that's gone bad. These units tend to get pretty filthy inside as well because they're more of a conventional oven. So I've never seen one of these units that's been clean. This one's no exception because people bake in them just like a conventional oven. You're going to have food splattering and bubbling up and whatever. And if they're used especially for for um, searing or, or cooking steaks or anything like that, you're going to have food splatter. That's just the way they are. They all get pretty dirty inside. And you can't really clean these like you would a conventional oven because of the way that the elements are designed. You can't spray oven cleaners on them. It will damage the heating elements. So, and you can't use anything abrasive on these units. So every one of these units I've ever seen has been a pigsty inside just because of the way they are. But again, most conventional ovens are like that anyway until you run the self-clean feature or spray a bunch of nox noxious chemicals around to clean them off. This one's got a short, again, it's more likely the switches are bad. Let's get the top off. As you can see, this unit was installed in a cabinet, so it's quite dirty because it hasn't seen, this 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 hasn't been seen in however long it's been installed, probably, you know, at least, I'm going to say at least a dozen years. More like 20 years. Since this unit has seen the outside world, as far as, 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 except for the front. Uh, date on this one is, let me check the date and see what, when it was made, 1989. Looks like May of 1989. That makes this unit 33 years old. Four screws in the side, four screws in the back, and the cover will rip off. I don't think there's any more screws on here. It should just should lift off. There we go. Just stuck. Okay. A long time since I've seen the inside of one of these units, I'll tell you that much for sure. There's one of the heating elements there. Oh, look at the magnetron. You can see, you can tell this thing's been very well used. This unit's had the magnetron replaced. It came from Main Electronics, got their stamp on here. It's a QPB uh, magnetron, but that's not going to be the issue on this unit, guaranteed. Because as I told you before, the person that owns this doesn't use the uh, magnetron. I'm just inspecting to see if there's any wires that are damaged because these units do get warm. There's always the possibility that insulation will get damaged. Power cord coming in here. I guess first things first, we'll uh, inspect the wires and then check the switches. Power cord comes in, it goes to a fuse. Now you see the fuse is not blown, so I'm going to unplug the power cord here and just measure it again. Maybe the power cord's gone bad. Uh, I mean, that's highly unlikely, but the fact that the 15 amp fuse didn't blow, you have to rule everything out. So the, the um, cord is not damaged. And we still have our short measuring from neutral. Of course, the fuse is fine. So the fuse didn't blow. It tripped the breaker. We have to check the switches. We've got two sets of switches in here, a primary switch and a short switch. Um, 
if the primary switch failed, the short switch would have done its job when the door was opened and it would have basically shorted out and burned itself out in the process. So if I unplug the primary switch here, the short should now go away on the power cord. Which it ha I'm still measuring something across there, but it's not a short. What are we measuring? It should be, it should be open. 67 ohms. Oh, that's the transformer. That'll be the power transformer for the uh, for the timer. So definitely the, sh the switches are bad. Uh, we'll remove the two switches on here and we'll get some new ones and replace them. Switches come out pretty easy. Just open the door. This is going to be quite brittle plastic, so I have to be really quite careful to remove them. I'll just pop the switch out like that and the switch is indeed shot. It's not clicking. This should be a normally open switch and the switch is not working. So this switch is shot for sure. There's the uh, there's the phone ring is what that is. The switch is shorted. Right, this is the normally closed contact or the normally open contact. What is it here? Normally open. So the normally open contact should be open when the button is up, but as you can see it's it's not because the switch itself has failed. The switch is shot. With that switch being shot, the other switch is going to be shot. It's going to be the short switch, which is the, the back of the two switches. There's two switches here. One of them is, the norm, is a normally open switch, which is used to control the counter, to stop the counter from counting down. And the switch behind it is the short switch, which will also be bad. So I'm just going to carefully remove this switch. And again, you got to be really careful with this, this plastic because with it being 33 years old, the plastic itself is going to be pretty brittle. So you got to be quite careful. So this switch will be fine. This is the normally open switch. And that switch is used. That's the, is that the short switch. No, yeah, that's the that's the normally open switch. That switch here is used to signal the timer. I can test it. It will be open until I push the button down. I'm going to push down the button. That switch is fine. That's on the blue leads, the blue plug. The one that's bad is the one on the yellow wires. It's the short switch, which is normally closed switch. Again, I gotta get this out of here quite carefully because I don't want to damage the plastic pins. Because anytime you get something that's this old, you gotta worry that the pins are gonna be gonna be damaged. I'm gonna flip that down so I can pull the switch forward and remove the switch. This one's the short switch. The job of the short switch, this one's a normally closed switch. You can see these are original switches. They've never been replaced. As you can see, this switch is going to be shorted as well. And I know I've done it diagrams before. I'll do another diagram here. That switch is shorted. Normally when you push down on the switch, that switch would open, but of course it's not because the contacts have been welded shut. Um, I'll draw a little diagram about how these switches work. I know I've done it before, but um, it's on other videos, so I might as well show you on this one as well. I'll, I'll do a diagram. Maybe I'll do it once I get the unit working and get it off the bench. Anyway, I got to source a couple switches. So once we get a couple switches on here, we'll replace them, and that should make this unit work. I couldn't uh, get identical switches to, well, one of them is identical. I couldn't get a, a second switch, like the short switch, because they don't stock them, whether they make them or not. These days, I don't know, but um, the two switches, of course, two different designs of switches that the unit had was conventional switch was a normally open and a normally closed contact and a common, and then of course the monitor or the shorting switch, which is just a normally closed. Well, I couldn't get switches like that. I had to get two switches of this design, which you've got your normally open and your normally closed contact. Normally closed is this one, and normally open is that one. So when we test this, put the common on. That one's normally closed. It may help if I put the meter in the right mode. 
Okay, so normally closed. That one's open, and when we activate the switch, it goes to the normally open contact. That's fine for the main switch, which plugs in to the harness up here, which has already been cut apart. I think probably because the uh, the switch itself failed before, or the plastic failed on this. We'll put this one on just like that. Actually, I'm going to put it on the other way. I'll put this one on here and then slide that one on like that and then put this one on down here and then this can go back into its its holder. Open the door to do this. And it'll just pop right in and snap in place like that. So when the door closes, it activates that switch. The other switch, this one here, I'm going to have to use the normally closed, the normally closed contact, and not the normally open contact, because this one here was designed to plug into a, a switch like that. And obviously, I'm going to need to connect it to these two terminals. I'm going to have to cut this holder apart which is something that we had to do on a lot of these units when the switches became harder to get, a little easier. There we go. Okay, now I can connect the short switch. I can connect one to the common and the other one I can connect to the normally closed, leaving the normally open contact open. The idea behind this is, and I can show you with the meter, normally when the door is closed, this is again the resistance of the transformer. Make sure it don't short out here. Okay, might help if the probes would stay in place. All right, so when the door closes, the first thing that happens is, of course, this switch opens first before the door closes, and you've got your connection made to the high voltage circuits and the transformer and everything else is going to turn on when the microwave is turned on. If the it's designed so that if this switch were to fail and not open, as soon as the door opens, you'd have a dead short because this switch would go into a normally closed state. That's the job of this second switch. This is the what they call the monitor switch or the shorting switch. Its job is if this switch fails to open, as soon as you open the door, this one is going to put a dead short on it. It's going to blow the circuit. So normally when the switches are in place, I'll put this back in place now. I have to pop this switch in. And this one's got to go in the back. And then the other switch goes in front of it. So we'll pop this one in. Fit it over the little posts. The plastic posts. And this one here will go all the way in like that. And then this other switch. This is the one that controls the timer. As you can see, this is a normally open. It looks like the other switch, but it's a normally open as opposed to a normally closed switch. This one goes in also in the same place. And again, we pull down the little lever. The switch can pop in like that. And now both those switches will make contact when you close the door. One will be open, one's closed. And again, we're measuring our 69 ohms here. We don't want to see that change, which it doesn't. Right. Our switches are operating correctly. So now I can apply power to this unit and it should work. Go get my power cord, we'll plug it in and test it out.
Some of you have probably noticed all this gunge around the magnetron thinking that that's a problem. It's actually not. That's just from the, the food cooking. As I say, this unit here, I don't think the magnetron's been used more than a couple of hours, if that, since it was installed. Uh, the owner of this unit doesn't use it to cook food using microwaves, even though it has the ability to do it. It has a turntable just like a conventional uh, microwave. The strength to this model was the heating element for the radiant heat. That was the strength to the Madam Grill. Uh, Panasonic had their Dimension 3, which was a big convection microwave. They had their Dimension 4, which was also uh, a big convection type microwave. And then they had the Madam Grill, which is this one here. The Madam Grill followed the others. I'm just making sure that this is on good and tight. There. Um, so the Madam Grill was one of their last, I think they actually, this came after the Dimension 3 and then they brought the Dimension 4 out if I remember correctly. So they, they had the Dimension 3 convection, then this model was released, and then the Dimension 4 followed, which went back to a convection type and this actually they this was out at the same time as the dimension Four. two different two different marketing campaigns for this dimension Four were marketed as a convection and this one was marketed as a radiant heat and they both have their advantages and disadvantages but the big advantage is of course it can cook using microwaves and heat so you can cook with the speed of a microwave and food still browns and that was what they that was the strength to this one was food would brown like it would in a conventional oven, but you could speed up the process. Although I don't believe this one's ever been used for that. The person that owns it has used it exclusively as a conventional oven for doing things like chicken and fish and all kinds of other, you know, all kinds of other meals uh, that would normally be cooked in a conventional oven because it's faster, it gets up to temperature faster, and it has more precise temperature control than say a big oven and that was the strength to this one and from what I know that's pretty much exclusively what this one has been used as I was told that if the microwave portion didn't work don't worry about it it never gets used so let's see if it will heat up so plug it in Well, it didn't trip the breaker or blow a fuse. I don't know how to work this thing. Uh, let's see here. Well, if I do that. Okay, that's microwave. We don't want that. How about bake? Okay, 200 degrees. Okay, so now it's turning on the heating elements. And this will heat the unit up. If I put my meter on. AC and I know they cycle back and forth so you'll see them go on and off there's nothing on this one yet there now this one comes on you hear it click 114.6 and then you hear it click and it'll go back to the other one there it goes see now it clicked now the bottom heating element is on and that's how this unit operates it cycles bottom element top element bottom element top element it does that, it, it, the temperature increases really quite quickly on these, but they have a very good temperature control. And that's why people that have one of these Madam Grills, they love it. As a conventional small oven for cooking, you know, smaller roasts and, and cookies and what, fish, anything you could put in a regular oven, this being a smaller oven cavity, it does it. It does it a lot faster and a lot more accurate than say heating up a big oven and that's why people that have this unit loved it so much that's why I'm repairing this one anyway this one's fixed I'll go get my my marking pen and we'll draw out that circuit so I can explain how the short switch operates on a unit like this and I'm gonna use the receipt I bought the switches ten dollars and seventy five cents what the switch cost me for the two switches. Um, anyway, um, 
So the, the whole premise is you need to make sure that there's no power that could reach the magnetron if the door was opened. That's the whole idea behind it. So you've got your, your power plug, right? Your tube and your ground. So you've got your hot and your neutral and your ground. Of course the ground, we'll call this one the neutral and we'll call this one the live. First thing that happens is you've got a transformer here. Well, actually, you got a fuse. <laughs> you got a, a fuse here, 15 or 18 amp fuse. But then you got a power transformer. This is for the the low voltage devices to the timer. And then you've also got your neutral comes off, and it goes down, and it'll go into your big power transformer for the magnetron right and then your magnetron is uh, one side is it's, it's connected to ground the other side goes through a capacitor and then, then there's a diode a stacked diode here which I don't remember which way it goes in but that goes there like that and then that goes that's your HV to your magnetron and you've also got a, a connection off of here for this particular microwave that's going to go to your heating element. So we'll just kind of draw this around here and I'll bring it up here. We'll, we'll call this your heating element. And there's an upper and a lower one. Okay. Heating elements themselves go to a relay. And relay's got its own coil and that goes to the timer. To the timer to control it. Your hot line comes down. Your hot line goes to primary door switch. Primary door switch. That's the top one. The output from this switch comes down and it goes to the secondary interlock switch. This is the lower switch. This is the normally closed, right? This one's normally open. So if the door is in the closed, or the door is open, this would be closed. Door open. So this is closed. This provides a dead short to ground. And then this output will then go and power up your relays. So it'll go to your two separate relays. One relay that would be connected to the elements, to turn the elements off and on. And the other relay would be connected to the power supply for the magnetron. So normally, What's happening is when the door is open, this switch is closed, providing a dead short. When you close the door, the door is open right now. When you close the door, this switch will open before this switch closes. That removes the dead short so that power can get to the two relays to control either the elements for heating or to turn on the magnetron. And of course the relays are connected back to the timer. The reason it's done this way is so that when you open the door, <clears throat> if something jams the switch, either the door hook is jammed or you got food in there or something, and this switch fails to open. So now the switch is on and you open the door, this switch will short, and when this switch shorts, it will blow the fuse or trip the breaker. In this case, the fuse, I guess, is a higher rated fuse than the breaker. It's probably like an 18 amp fuse on here and the breaker is 15 amps, so the breaker trips first. But that's why this circuit is required. It's, it doesn't ma it's not required for this heating element part of things, because the heating element's not going to be hazardous. But if this switch was not here, if you eliminated the switch completely, then I'll put a switch over top of there. there. Now, now it's not there. Okay, so if this switch was eliminated 
and the microwave is operating and you open the door and the switch failed to open to cut off power to the microwave, then the microwave oven would continue to operate, the magnetron would continue to operate and you'd have a very bad uh, microwave radiation leak if the door were to open. So, and of course there's other, there's another switch in here, there's another normally closed, or another normally open switch I say, that I didn't draw in, but there is another switch which is providing the timer, that's that third switch, it's just providing a signal to the timer, tell, tell the timer whether the door is open or closed. What that's for is so that when you open the door, if you didn't have that other switch, remember the timer has still got power, so if you didn't have that third switch which opens when the door is opened, you would kill, you'd kill the power, no problem, because the primary switch is going to open before the second switch. This is the bottom switch, right? This switch will open, then this one shorts. If you did not have the timer switch, the timer would know that the door is open, it would continue to count down. So that third switch is there just to tell the timer, hey, stop. When the door is closed and you press the start button again, it turns it back on and everything is uh, tickety-boo, as they say. Okay, that's the, the basic operation. I know you guys want to see what happened to these switches. We'll see how how welded they are internally. I guess first things first, we'll start with this uh, L2C2MR, which is uh, rated at 0.1 amps, 250 volts AC. Uh, nope, it doesn't, it doesn't handle much current. It doesn't have to. Its job is just to commit suicide, basically. If it were to close and, it's, and the circuit is energized, the job of this switch is just to blow up. So I fully expect that they're going to see these switches aren't designed to even come apart. They're sealed up pretty good. But I'm, we're going to see that this one here is uh, just trashed inside. Get a little screwdriver in here. I can pry it open. And maybe not. Here, let's try this. Smaller, smaller side cutters. I'll be able to pry this one open. It's going to break opening anyway, so. We will see what's inside here. There we go. So this is what this switch consists of. It's just a little button that when it pushes down, it pushes these contacts apart. And of course the contacts aren't going to come apart now because it's welded together. Now sometimes these switches just fail on their own. Quite often this is the switch that instigates the problem. There's no problem with the door, but what happens is over years and years of use, this little contact bends. And that looks like that's exactly what happened on this one. If you take a close up look at the switch itself, you'll see what happened. Normally this spring action will keep this pushed up, but you see what's happened on here, even though it's fused, actually it's not fused, it's just it's just bad. If this were to be bent back the way that it was originally, we put a little bend back in here. Normally that would have been bent up like that. Right? So when the door is closed, it's holding it apart. I actually would have had an even bigger bend than that on it if I bend it a little more. It would bend more, more like that. So when the door is closed, it holds them apart like that. When the door opens, the switch shorts. But what happens over the years on these switches is just through metal fatigue. Because remember, there's never any current passing through here. Anytime there's power applied to these pins, because this is what this is the bottom switch, right? That's right right here. This is the one that's across the bottom across the, the uh, line and neutral. Whenever the door is closed, that is open. When you open the door, the top switch opens first before this switch closes. So you're never going to have any current flowing across here. But what happens on these is over the years, this spring starts to bend and then it the contacts get closer and closer and closer together and eventually well you saw how this one was it shorts and when it shorts that day comes where you open the door and the switch is shorted you are I should say sorry comes the day where the switch 
does not disengage when you close the door. The switch is still shorter than when you close the door. The switch closes down, turns on the power. There's a dead short because this short switch has already failed because of metal fatigue. And then the switch here blows up in the process because it's got the full line voltage across it. So let's pop this switch apart too and take a look at the damage inside this one, which will also be catastrophic because, well, it had 15 amps of current applied across it. So this one will be blowed up, but good. Just pop this apart. Some of these switches you could actually take apart, but not these ones. These ones here were riveted together, so you can't take these ones apart without breaking them. Without breaking them top off them. But that's okay because that's what we do. We take things apart to see what went wrong. So here's the inner workings of this switch or what was the inner workings of this switch which is a little mechanical switch that when you push it down it's supposed to click back and forth and it's no longer clicking back and forth because the contacts are welded together. Normally that should click back and forth, and it's not. And now it's moving a bit, but it's not It's not clicking like it's supposed to. You'll see when I pull the contacts out that they were welded together. See what I mean? So that's uh, the guts of the two little switches that failed. On microwave ovens, when you have a switch that's failed and it's say fuses can blow because the fuse just gets old and the link can fail. So you can test your switches and see if your switches are operating. But in this case, we know the switches were bad. We were able to test it. We had a dead short across the input. So we knew the switches were bad and when I pulled the switches out, as you saw before, this one, like the button was almost all the way down. So when you change out the switches on a microwave, you always need to change both your primary interlock and the short switch. Because even if the primary interlock appears to be functional, well it has fused, you can see where it sparked down here, it has fused, the contacts inside will be damaged. They can't not be damaged from the arcing that has occurred. So for the cost of the switch, you change both of the switches. I just showed you how you can use these conventional switches when you can't find these specific short switches that they used to sell. I don't know whether they're available from Panasonic or not, but when I went to the suppliers, they didn't have any of these switches. But again, you can use the conventional switches. You just have to cut the uh, harness so that you can connect it to the normally closed contact. Anyway, that's uh, that one's in the books. Going back to the owner of it, I'd be very happy that they can cook again. Thanks for watching.